Hey guys, this is Ruger82 here on Tactical Homestead and Hobbies. And just want to take a quick moment and give you a tip on mounting a scope on your rifle. And today we have a uh, Remington 700 BDL here, chambered in a um, 7mm mag, Remington mag. And I'm going to be putting a scope on this today. And it has the Leopold style mounts where the rear um, has a set screw on each side. And uh, one of the, the good benefits is, um, or one of the things that's very important if you're going to do uh, competitive shooting or you just want to make sure you have a gun that is, there's absolutely no problem with the way the scope was mounted, is to get a scope mounting kit. And the one that I have today here is the Wheeling Engineering. And this comes with all the tools you need with the level level, the torque wrench, a little DVD on how to do certain things, the lapping bars and um, the scope centering, the ring, ring centering tool kits for 30 millimeter and one inch tubing. Um, and that's, that's where we're at. So after, you know, step one, after you had determined what scope you're going to run on your gun, um, is when you, if you get a gun that already has a mount on it or a base, the first thing I would do is make sure that these bases are Loctited in uh, with some at least blue Loctite and make sure they're torqued to the proper specs. Then once you get your rings on there, very important what you wanna do, especially on this style ring setup where you have the rear that can be adjusted left or right with these set screws, is you gotta make sure that your rings are centered with each other from the front to the rear. And how we do that is with these centering uh, blocks or tubes that we have here. We put them in, we get them in here, and you get them where they're touching, just about touching. And when you want to look at them from up above or the side, you want to make sure that they, the cones come to a complete centering point. And because of this scope mount, the way that it is, the ring is here, if you just throw this on there and tighten each side, this will be cantered one way or the other, which is going to uh, pose unnecessary pressure on your scope and can you just cause your scope to fail prematurely on you or even cause damage to the scope. So the best way to do that is with the centering tool that comes with this wheeling kit. So this is step one here, or I should say hey, step two after you secure your, your base in. Step two is to make sure your rings are centered from front to rear, which they are. So then I'll go ahead and torque these to the specs and then we'll move on to the next step. All right guys, so once you get this um, set the way you want it and everything's perfect, I uh, back them out. I use a little bit of um, just a blue Loctite, that's the medium strength. I'm not trying to use red on just about anything unless it's something you never want to remove again because um, it does uh, make it very difficult to get it off. So once I do that, I double check things. Now, if I was going to lap these rings uh, with my lapping kit here um, and my grit, then I would go back and double check this again to make sure it's all aligned. However, this is a hunting rifle. It's for my um, brother-in-law. I'm putting a scope on it for him. He's only going to hunt with it. I'm not going to spend the time to lap these rings. Um, if I was shooting competition and I just wanted to make sure that I never had to worry about any of the issues being with the way my scope was mounted, I would definitely go ahead and lap the rings. But these are uh, high quality rings already and we got them centered so we're going to move on to the next step. And once you get these where you want them you're going to take our our torque wrench here and i got it set for about 30 to 35 pounds and we're going to make sure that uh i'm going to do this with holding the camera too make sure that it is make sure it is uh torqued on both sides here into this so another reason why torque wrench is very important so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get these um, centering blocks off here and we'll go ahead and test fit our scope and we'll get our, get our eye relief set and then when we're done setting all that we'll do the level level next so one thing I like to do once you actually get the scope in place here before you actually torque it down the one thing you want to do is lay it up here put it up his shoulder like you're, the way you would shoot it, and you're actually going to 
they actually just lay your head down as you would with any deer rifle or rifle that you're used to shooting. So you're going to do that a few times. And I can see a nice full picture without having to get close or be back here. So that's what you want to do a few times. And once you're good with that, then what you'll do is we're going to go to the level level step uh, step next to make sure that the scope is actually level with the rifle. Then we'll uh, put some uh, blue Loctite down, torque these down, and we'll be able to bore sight it next. Okay, so now that we have the eye relief set the way we want it, we're going to do our level level. So with the level level kit, you have two pieces. You have a piece that goes on the rifle and a piece that goes on the scope. Now the challenge with the, with this system can be is do you have a nice flight flat surface on your gun in this particular case we do this base here has got a perfect flat spot there's plenty of space here so we're going to be able to just slip this up in there like so and then this other piece will go right on top the scope like so and then what we do is we come in here and we make sure that the rifle is as level as possible, about like that. Then we come up here and we look and we see that, hey, our scope is not level. So we need to rotate the scope um, away from us here. Let me come back in here and we check our gun. Gun's level, scope's level. And then what we'll do, before we torque it down, we'll check it. I like to still check it against like a 90 degree corner in my house. Make sure it doesn't look terrible, but I try to trust that these two levels are perfect and it usually comes out perfect every time. So we'll go ahead and set that, torque down our scope rings and we'll be ready for bore sight. So now that I've got these snugged up and I've already checked it um, with my own sight and it looks perfect, it looks beautiful, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove one screw at a time and I'm going to put some blue Loctite on it and then snug it back up, move to the next, so on, so on. And then we're going to get our torque wrench out and we're going to torque it all up um, and we'll be set. Okay, so now that we got our um, scope rings snugged up with Loctite on them, one more thing you want to check before you actually torque them down is you want to look at the gap here and you want to make sure that this gap is equal on all four sides. So we're going to make sure the gap over here and here is equal, same with here and here. And then what we're going to do is I got our torque wrench that comes with our wheeler kit. It's called the fat wrench. I'm going to set it just below 20 inch pounds. And we're gonna start over here. We're gonna snug it a little bit. We're not gonna click yet. And we're gonna come back here. And we're gonna snug a little bit. Then we're gonna come over here. We're gonna snug a little bit. Come back to here. Snug a little bit. Come back to here. We're gonna keep doing that. We're not gonna over torque anything at first. And then boom, I get my first click. Come here, got my click. Got my click, and then I'll come back and just check these again to make sure nothing shifted, and it has not. And that's it. We're done. Everything is torqued properly, Loctited, leveled, eye relief is set. We're all ready to go uh, get the bore cider in it, and then take it to the range and see how she does. So next we're going to take our bore cider. Now this is one that I just got from my grandfather, um, inherited kind of. It's just a cheap one, you know, maybe 30, 40 bucks online. But the neat thing is it comes with all these different adapters and it does most um, caliber weapons. So we'll come down here and we'll go ahead and get that put in and we're going to spin it until it snugs up. Got the right adapter on. Then we're going to go ahead and flip it on. 
And if you look down here, you can see my laser down there on the wall. And we're basically going to just line the scope up. Let's see if I can do this this way. Kind of get the idea. It's not the best picture, but we're going to actually move the cross arrows to match that dot. Down here, that's only about 15 yards. So I'll get it close and then I'm going to check it outside at about 50 yards and then we'll be ready to go to the range. So guys, that's pretty much how we set up. A um, couple tips on how to properly mount a scope. Um, this is more than efficient enough to do a hunting scope. We want to make sure it's secure, it's tight, it's not going to go anywhere uh, when we're in the field. Again, we would use the lapping system if we wanted it to be a little more precise if we were doing some um, target shooting or competition shooting, but uh, this will be more than fine for hunting. And I um, appreciate, appreciate you guys watching and uh, watching my channel here. Um, please comment, like, subscribe as I build my, uh, my channel here. And um, thank you so much for watching Tactical Homestead and Hobbies. And God bless, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day at the range.